Okay, so from continu continued from part two. After being injected with strong antipsychotic medication, I came down from my manic high, not drug induced, I don't do that kind of thing, never have, never will. Problem was, as reality began to sink in, I realized the seriousness and the stupidity of what I had done, and I felt like a complete 100% bonehead. With that realization locked firmly in my mind, and of course I believed that this was true, that I really was the biggest waste of skin ever to walk the face of the earth, I became deeply depressed, convinced that I was, without a doubt, the biggest loser ever to walk the face of the earth. On top of that, I had been told by numerous medical professionals that there was no hope for me ever to overcome my illness. However, I may be able to manage it. That statement didn't sit very well with me, and when I voiced my opinion that I knew that I could overcome my mental illness, and I was often pacified by statements like this, Dave, lighten up, you're one of the lucky ones. I'm thinking to myself, I'm one of the lucky ones, I'm here in the nut hut, and you're telling me I'm one of the lucky ones? Yes, Dave. Please explain to me, I mean, I'm looped, sure, I, I thought I heard you say I'm one of the lucky ones. Dave, we want you to know, and this is what the psych nurses and doctors are telling me, you respond well to medication. Therefore, you are capable of living a normal life if you stay on medication for the rest of your life. If you go off, watch out. And here's the statistics of how many people come back, and it was very high. And the intent was to break my will. My wife has explained to me since, I used to think that was kind of a really nasty thing to do, she's explained to me since that the medical community only knows one way of helping people get better, which isn't really getting better because if you get off your medication and you have the problem reoccur, are you really getting better? Well, no. The medical community only knows medication to be the best band-aid. And then of course there are these natural therapies and whatever, and I think there's some merit to those. But let me say here, I'm not anti-medication. Without medication, I don't know that I ever would have come down from my manic high and I was also on medication for two years and I was prepared to be on it for my entire life if that's what it took to live a normal life. Thankfully, I had a psychiatrist who had a heart. He believed in me and after two years I approached him because I had promised a church leader that I would not go off my medication without professional advice because he says, I've seen it too, too many times, Dave. You, you get feeling better after a month and you want to go off and then the problem reoccurs. So I kept that promise. I'm not on medication today. I haven't been for five or six years. Although I have had people ask me, what kind of medication are you on? I would say this, I'm on love. And you will begin to see that I believe that love and seeing our lives through the lens of love, live to learn life, let me start again. Live to l l learn to live life through the lens of love, the four L's. That's my motto. Okay, so the psychiatrists are trying to convince me you'll never get better. I, if I had a dollar for everybody that said they could live without medication and then wind up back in the psych ward, I'd be a rich man. On and on and on. Okay, living life with no hope for recovery. Let me tell you something. If you are someone who is a mental health worker, and I got to tell you, Man, you do a good work. There are so many wonderful people like you who are in this business of taking care of psychiatric patients, if you want to put it that way, because you have a heart, and my hat goes off to you. I, I dealt with nurses like that when I was a patient in a mental hospital, and I thanked God that I did have those type of nurses. Okay, so here's what happens. You're told in the hospital, ah, there's no hope for recovery. You can only ever manage this illness. Great. So I'm a complete loser unless I stay on medication. And of course, men see this more than women. Oh no, it doesn't mean you're a completely, complete loser. It's like diabetes and blah, 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 blah. Okay, I'm going to tell you from someone who's been there. It's not like diabetes. It's, you don't need to think of this, as I heard one psychiatrist say or professional in the area of mental health. You don't need to think, this, think of this as a chronic illness. That only makes a patient feel hopeless. There is a better way, and I am here to tell you, it can be overcome if you choose. And do not let anybody convince you that it's just something that, poof, oh, I have a mental illness. Poor me. Bull own it. 
It can be overcome if you want to get better. But if you thrive on the attention, if you thrive on not needing to try and find a job if you're a man or a woman, if you thrive on getting a two-week holiday from your children, all expenses paid by the federal government, you may not want to get better. If you choose to get better, I am here to tell you right now, you can become better and I am living proof. And Oprah, you can talk to my psychiatrist, his name is Dr. Singh. You can talk to, look through my medical records, whatever else, and verify all this. I'm not lying to you. <sighs> okay, living life with no hope for recovery. Let me tell you what this is like. Having been officially diagnosed with a debilitating and chronic mental illness, this is what I was told by the professionals, I was finally sent home from the hospital with my wife, who I was very convinced at the time hated me for what I had done. I'm chasing Jessica Simpson. She was pregnant. We had two other kids at home. She had to go to our ecclesiastical leaders to pay the rent because I racked up our credit card and drained our bank account. I have since forgiven myself for that. And it is my mission to make a major negative into a major positive. And again, if you are out here and you can relate to how I feel, please watch to the end of these video clips. I might end up getting to part four because I see I'm going fairly long here. And then you need to get help. You need to confide in someone you trust. And then you need to walk yourself into a mental health facility. And let me tell you something right now. That is the manly thing to do. You take responsibility for your illness and you understand that if you love your wife and your family and you want to make things better and make things right, the best way to do it is to set the example for your children, for anybody else who's watching or even if they don't know. Walk yourself in to a mental health facility, tell them how you're feeling, be 100% honest and get the help you need before your mental illness gets out of control please. Okay, the worst part was, while my wife's hate was just my perception, I felt that she was justified in hating me for what I had done. I mean, I was a complete idiot. In fact, I too hated myself, and I truly wished from the bottom of my heart and soul that I could shrivel up and die. I remember it day after day after day after day. And you want to know why I kept hanging on? Two reasons. My children and a life insurance policy that I knew had not quite turned over past the two-year mark, and if I was to kill myself before that time, my wife would miss out on the money. That's a sad thing to say, but it's the truth. Tune in to part number three, or what are we on, part number four? Anyways, tune in to the next one to hear more.